All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. We welcome everybody, especially the Indonesian uh, people from Indonesia. We love them, uh, especially the Muslims. We care for them, and today we will show them how this, those who claim that they teach in your Islam, they are a bunch of idiots. Uh, actually, I'm very grateful that Muslims trying to answer me, because each time they do so, they help us to make more Muslims leave Islam. And yesterday, or two days ago, you saw the video, I don't know if you saw it or not, where we showed you how uh, uh, Mr. Insan, he uh, admitted that saying that the sun set in murky water is very wrong. And he claimed that the one who said that it was Alexander the Great, but the fact it was his prophet. So he admitted that his prophet uh, is a false prophet. And I wonder how many uh, Muslims are going to leave Islam after the video he made, for he make it clear that there is no way uh, the true God will teach that the sun set in murky water. And he said clearly that I was lying in the translation or misleading Muslims about what this verse is talking about, when the fact I was just reading what his prophet said. So this man, not only he do not know his religion, he is a fool trying to act as if he is smart. But the more he speak to defend Islam, the more he expose Islam. And I'm very grateful for having such a man uh, in uh, our our way. Today is no different. This guy, he is like a this, you know, 10 years old kid. He collected some questions from Facebook, I guess. And supposedly he will give me five, uh, <clears throat> as you see in the title of his video, he will give me five BMW, you know, five BMW, uh, if I can answer those questions. Now, you know, for sure, those questions are extremely hard for Christian friends to answer. I mean, and that's mean I will miss the five BMW. You know, <clears throat> I was wondering, you know, when a person, he promised you five BMW, why he is promising me uh, money, if I can answer? I mean... It doesn't make sense. And why he's promising me BMW, which is made by the Kuffar, made by the Christians, doesn't make sense. Uh, is that your dream? Obviously, this guy, he himself, he is after money. Otherwise, he will not think about, uh, what about promising me heaven? Hmm? What about promising me to know, uh, to see the truth? Uh, what about promising me, uh, you know, something good? I mean, what, uh, what uh, five BMW? This is a very childish promise. Uh, you know, you are a Muslim, you should promise me something very valuable for you. As an example, why you don't promise me the same as your prophet promised? He promised you to drink camel urine. And today, if you can refute what I am saying to you, I promise you that I will contact some friends in Arabia, as, long, as you know, I am an Arab, and they will send you camel urine fresh, coming from... Uh, <clears throat> The, the thing of the camel, as you see. You see, this is how you do it. You lift up the tail, and then you hit his uh, testicles, and then, poof, you know, he start pissing. And then, you know, like you drink. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. So at least drink me something you Muslims, you practice, not something you don't practice. I mean, what be in the video? Uh, and by the way, it's not me who said drinking camel urine is, uh, you know, this is your prophet. If we go, <clears throat> your prophet, he said, uh, let us see. You see, this is your prophet, this is Jami'a al-Turmudi, and this is Sahih. He said that the prophet, he ordered Muslims to drink the milk and the urine of the camel. So, uh, you know, I don't know why you, why you are promising me 5 BMW. Uh, I thought the best is what your prophet, he uh, promised you. Camel urine. Anyway, camel urine is good. Uh, according to science, it's very healthy. It only can destroy your kidney. And increase the poison in your blood and you can die because there's many viruses live inside the urine and uh, not only united nation health department they warned from camel urine because it's deadly dangerous but obviously allah you have wisdom there but i want you to make a video drinking camel urine as your prophet he order you to do and then we can discuss the five uh, bmw now let us go to the video and see what this guy want to say to us go ahead mr uh, <clears throat> uh, 
Stop. What? We did not start yet. What? What? What is that? Music? No, no, I could not believe it. This is a music. This, this is Barry da Billy Dancing music. Stop. Mr. Insan, I have a very sad news for you. Your prophet says that the one who plays music, Allah will turn him into a pig and a monkey. And you know your prophet, he never lie. If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. <clears throat> uh, hold on. Where is the hadith? Uh, I missed it. Playing the music and you are a Muslim. Hmm. Unbelievable. Read carefully with me, Mr. Insan. I'm very sad for you, my friend, that now you broke the command of your prophet and Allah, he will curse you and he will cause the earth. Read, read carefully, brother. People among my nation will drink uh, wine. So your prophet is against wine, but he support your him. Give him, a, give him a, a, a thumb here. You know, prophet is making right decision. Wine is bad, camel urine is healthy. Calling it by other name. And the musical instrument will be played. See, this is additional. Musical instrument will be played for them. And singing girls will sing to them too. Uh, and they go to Indonesia, night to club. You know, everybody, name for me one Indonesia Muslim don't watch singing girls. Name for me one Indonesia Muslim don't play music. And I'm not going to say a name for me when Indonesian don't drink alcohol because as I know, majority they do. But look what Allah will do to you if you play music. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them. Oop. Uh -uh. How come uh, Mr. Insan is not being swallowed yet? And will turn them into monkeys and pigs. So Mr. Insan, according to your prophet, as soon as possible, Allah, he hear this video, or he watch it he will curse you and he will make you a monkey or a pig and here we see that muhammad obviously is lying because here we go the muslims you know not only they sing and they dance and they play music and they drink i mean they do everything in the book and out of the book and we did not see one of them allah he made him pig and a monkey so here we need to question the 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 how how you know this is a prophet of god he's talking you know this is not uh, somebody from the street Somebody is saying things which supposed is true. So uh, uh, if this is a true, then uh, then you know uh, your prophet should should not lie, you know. And look here, this is Sahih al Bukhari. So you don't say this is a uh, this is daif. Not only he will make you a pig, my friend. You will stay as a monkey and as a pig under the judgment day. Read, read. Allah will destroy them during the night. Ah, this will happen only at night, not in daytime. So you can enjoy your daytime. You know, but at night, Allah will make you a pig. You wake up in the morning, you find yourself a pig or a monkey. Choose one and say, I don't know which one you like, monkey or a pig, it's up to you. Uh, I advise you to uh, to be a monkey because at least you can judge. I mean, you can jump from a tree to a tree. It's more fun, you know? Yeah. And then Allah will destroy them during the night and uh, let the mountain fall on them. Uh -huh. And he will transform them, the rest, into monkeys uh, and pigs. So some of you, Allah will put mountains on them, and some of you, Allah will make them pigs and monkeys. Can you tell me which some is you? And you idiot, you are playing the music for me in the video. When I say there is no Muslim left, I mean it. Those are not Muslims. Those are Ashish Kebab Muslims. Those are not Muslims. A Muslim is somebody follow his prophet order. No music. And look. Your prophet said, Allah will make you, keep you as a monkey or a pig and, and will, will remain like this until the day of resurrection. So Mr. Insan, why your prophet lie? Because here we go, you play the music and obviously you are not turned into a pig, neither a monkey, even though you talk like one. Like you say, why Christian prince? I mean, what is that? I don't know. So, but uh, obviously uh, Allah is lying here. Prophet Muhammad is lying. He's a false prophet. Here we go. You sing and your uh, girls, they dance and they, you know, the biggest belly dancing country in the world is Egypt. Have you ever seen one of those belly dancers? Allah, and she is a Muslim. She, you know, Allah made her a, a pig or a monkey, brother. 
Hmm. Obviously, Muhammad is a fraud. Like you. All right. Let us skip the music so Allah will not make you a monkey. May Allah forgive you, brother. And may Allah... Uh, I will talk to Allah because as you know, I'm an Arab. We have connection. So I will tell Allah not to make you a monkey. You know, I will see maybe we can transform you into like a camel maybe. You know, it's a monkey. I mean, it's too much. You know, you don't deserve to be a monkey, to be honest with you. Maybe a cat or something. Okay, let us skip the music part. Go to where... Uh, here they are just talking about me, Christian Prince. You do not know. Christian Prince, you have no idea. Everybody is laughing who have idea. Who are, this is why you don't dare to call me. This is why none of you dare, or those who claim to be a scholar or teachers or stars, to call me. Why you don't call? What you will lose? You will win, right? Allah will make you win. Okay, here this is all is just uh, Christian Prince. He don't know what he's talking about. All right. All of this about Christian Prince do not know what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, we, oh, here we go, this, uh, Mr. Insan, who Allah m might uh, transform him. Uh, we hope he, that will not do that. Don't worry, Allah will not do that because Allah is fake God and Muhammad was <laughs> lying. <laughs> Don't worry about the music, man. Play music as you wish. Okay. Music, huh? His grand prize BMW for Christian Prince. Only for me? Uh, uh, but just, this is only for me? What about we give every Indonesian one, you idiot? I mean, your people, they are poor. They are hungry. They are working in Saudi Arabia as, as you know, made. You know, as long as you have money for 5 BMW, what about you donate the money you have to those poor people? You are a fraud. Go ahead. That's why you chose to be a Muslim, right? Because it's a business. Go ahead. Hi, Christian Prince. Uh, hi, hi. Since when a Muslim, he say hi. Assalamu alaikum, you idiot. Hi. Are you in the night club? What hi? Hi, hi, how are you? Everybody waiting for you so we can hear the wisdom of Muhammad and barbecue. Hi, hi, how are you? What is this? You are an ustaz in Indonesia, claim to be sheikh, and you are saying to me, hi, hi, okay, hi, hello. What is that, man? I'm really shocked. Okay, hi. Hi, Christian Prince. I'm, okay, Christian Prince, he heard you now. Okay, go start from zero. For Christian Prince. No, hold on. His grand prize BMW for Christian Prince. I don't like BMW. Can I get Volvo? I mean, please, can we like negotiate about that the car? I mean, why BMW? I mean, this... <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> I am an Arab. I like camel. You idiot! What? What I will do with the BMW? I drive it, and the desert doesn't go. What's wrong with you? A BMW to Christian Prince. For Christian Prince. Hi, Christian Prince. Hi, hi. I will give you a the BMW car mm -hmm. as a reward if you can answer every question as follow. Every question, I mean, what do you, why you don't make them one on of the follow? I mean, this is very hard. Come on, this is here. This is very impossible. Mission impossible. Every question of the following. So if if I miss one, I will miss the BMW. Can I get a tire? <laughs> I'm very uh, Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. What is the question? First, so me the first in the Bible that tells. Jesus is a Christian. Stop! What? What this guy he just said? Show me a verse in the Bible that uh, <laughs> unbelievable. That's it. Took you too much to think about those questions, brother. I think you really, you really. I mean, show me one verse in the Bible says that Jesus Christ is a Christian. I cannot do that. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> you got me busted, brother. I mean, the first question alone is a disaster by itself. 
How you get those questions, brother? Show me that Jesus Christ is a Christian. <laughs> I cannot believe it. <laughs> you idiot, he is a Christ. How he can be Christian? <laughs> It's like saying, show me that Allah, he became a Muslim. Actually, yeah, in the Quran it says Allah became a Muslim. Hold on, let me show you so we can laugh at your God. Have you ever heard of a God like this? Look at this. Let us laugh together. Allah, he took shahada, brother. You idiot. Christ is a Christ. How he can be Christian is a name given for those who follow Christ. So Christ is following Christ. You are an idiot. Allah took shahada. Allah says, there is no God. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa. And the angels. I don't know how, why he added the angels there, which make it very confusing in Arabic. There is no God but he that he witnessed Allah. Allah took shahada. Allah witnessed into who? You see, when we witness, we witness to higher authority. This is why they have a witness and we have a judge. So when Allah he witnessed, he witnessed to who? That because the one who made the Quran is an idiot. Secondly, we go back toward Christ as a Christian. Hmm. That's, a, that's a good thing. Hmm. Okay, I will ask you the same question, by the way. For us, we cannot say Christ is a Christian, you idiot, because he's a Christ. If we ask you right now, where Christ in the Quran he says, I am Nasara. Don't you Muslim you say those who follow Christ, they are called Nasara? Hmm? This is the Quran in front of us. And we see uh, Isa talking, he never said that he is Nasara. So why you are calling those who follow Isa Nasara? Or which Muslim you translate as a Christian? Huh? And uh, did your Isa in the Quran says he's a Muslim? Did he say I'm a Muslim? Those are the verses about Isa. If we go in the Quran, hmm? We see here the verses speaking about uh, the verse about Isa saying, When Isa he felt that uh, uh, chapter 3, verse number 252, uh, Isa he said to his followers, Who of you will be my helpers to Allah? The Hawarin, they said, We are the Ansar of Allah and we are Muslims. Do you see it? But Isa never said he's a Muslim. So where, why are you Muslim you say he's a Muslim? Secondly, if the Christians are Muslimun, why you call them Nasara? And this is the verse in front of you. So you are asking the Christian, why you call, why you, where you got the name a Christian from later? You know, we will see the question. You will see here it says that those are the Nasara, the word helper here is a translation for the word Nasara, which Muslim translate usually as a Christian. So why they are called a Christian, yet they are Muslims? You are being stupid. If we change the translation, let us go to the uh, Indonesian translation. Indonesian translation, Indonesian, Indonesian. Where is the Indonesian translation? Indonesian. Da, 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 da. Ah, here we go. Uh, Indonesian translation. Hmm. What is the translation here? Uh, 
Who wanna help me, my helper to Allah? Who wanna be the Christians? Then they said we are Muslims. The Christian, they said we are Muslims. So why you call them Nasara if they are if they are Muslims? See here the, the stupidity of those people who open their mouth, they don't know what they are talking about. Let us hear more of his questions so we can make it clear for everybody that this guy, he have no idea what he's talking about. You won't find any. It's because the name of Christian emerged for the first time in Antioch long after Jesus died. I mean, you are just really literally stupid, you idiot. Because you will quote for us right now, everybody will hear you, you will quote for us a verse from the Bible. So how this is first time emerged in Antioch, you donkey? Aren't you going to quote for me a verse from the Bible right now? Which is written 300 years before Antioch? Read it for us. And those who gave a name of Christian were Barnabas and Paul. Not Just to show you that you are stupid, read the verse for us and people will laugh. Go, quote the verse. Jesus. You can read it in Acts chapter number 11, hmm. verses number 24 to 26. Okay, let's go to Act and everybody will laugh at you. Act. Give me a second. Just to show you Muslims that those people who they are, they are just a bunch of fool and they are trying to fool you. They don't even know what they are talking about. And imagine this guy, he studied the case. You know, like we are not talking about a person who uh, doing live streaming and somebody asked him a question and, you know, like, okay, he made a mistake. No, this person is making a video and this video supposedly is, uh, you know, he prepared for it. And as long as you prepare for it, then why you say what you are saying? Let us go. Uh, <clears throat> All right. This is the verses he is quoting for us, and you will see what he is saying is absolutely a false statement. It doesn't say that Barnabas and uh, and uh, Paul are the one who said that. It says the first time they were called, the first time they were called, the disciple they were called people they called them hmm? Christians first in Antioch. So the people who call, the people of Antioch, they called the Christians Christians. This is the first time we have been given the name. Why? We are because we are following Christ. So you are a stupid, and you are a liar, and you are a fabricator. And as long as you agreed that this is in the time of Barnabas, hmm. Uh, and uh, Paul. So how you say first time this name came in uh, in the in the uh, in the meeting of Nika, you donkey? You see the Muslims. You see how those people are stupid. According to Islam, Paul was exist in the time of Jesus, and not only that, he saw Jesus. And not only that, Jesus made him blind. So according to Islam, Paul was one of the disciples of Jesus and same as Barnabas. So how you say this name first time come to existence 300 years after that incident when this, you are the one who's quoting for me the verse, you idiot. If we go in the Quran, <clears throat> It's, it's not easy to debate someone is ignorant because you are debating his ignorance, not his knowledge. You see here, this is your Quran in your language, Indonesian. I don't know what it says. You see, I have no idea what it says because this is not in my language. I mean the translation. But in Arabic, it says here, إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ or إِلَيْهُمْ إِثْنَيْنْ We sent to them two. 
and they accused him of lying and then we string them with the third okay who is the third if you go and read the Islamic interpretation you will see that they agree that the third is Paul let us do that give me a second They lie to you and their lies is high to the to the to, to their teeth. Uh, let us go first to English so people can see with us in English. Hold on. Okay. This is Ibn Kathir, chapter 36, verse number 14. Let us zoom out. We reinforced them with the third mean. We supported them, strengthened them with the third messenger. Ibn Jurayr narrated, from Wahab ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'ayb al Jabi, the names of the first two messengers were Shamun, which means Simon, and Yohanna, which means John. And the name of the third is Bulos, Paul. So even your stupid yellow pages of the Quran confirm that Jesus, he sent the three messengers, and the city was Intiak. Read, read carefully, you see it? The city is Intiak. This is your Muslim book. This is your Muslim book copying stories from the Bible, changing names, playing with it because it's written by ignorant, confirming something that Paul was a messenger, was sent to Antioch. And you are the one who says the one who created this is Paul. But in Islam, Paul is a good man. The stupid liars today they claim that paul was a bad person i mean where this is coming from can you show me one place your prophet says paul was a bad person and if he is why in the quran saying that those are three messengers the the strongest one between them is paul actually i can show you from different books give me a second that paul was healed by the messiah and he met the messiah in his way to damascus give me a second we do not tolerate ignorance we do not their ignorance is amazing but we are not going to let them get away with their lies and their ignorance And if you are a Muslim, ask yourself, if this guy claimed to be a person of knowledge and he is the one to help you, why he is saying this? Why, why he is saying this? I mean, why he is making up things, accusing Paul of creating Christianity? Because this is the purpose of saying, oh, the first time. And not only that, the stupid, he said Paul is the one who did it. And then he said in the first time in the meeting of Nicaea or Nicaea. Stupidity is amazing. Let us go and see. I will show you your Islamic books. Read with me, all of you Muhammadan people. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, volume number 18, page number 90. Actually, I'm going to translate in English. I'm going to switch to uh, uh, to Basha language using Google translation. I do not know how the translation will come, but you know, I will do my best. Let me, give me a second.
All right. If we go here, uh, it says here, and the, and the Isa, he came to them and he says, Who is my helper to Allah? And sorry to Allah. They said, We are your helper. And they believe in him and they support him. All right. If we go down a little bit, we will see the following. <clears throat> and this verse came down about the messengers of Isa. Peace be upon him. Ibn Ishaq said, and from those who Isa, he sent them between his disciple, it was the following names. They don't even know how to code the names. Imagine we have a person, his name is Fotros. Have you ever heard of a disciple? His name is Fotros. We never heard of Fotros. Ah, welcome to Islam. And the second one is Poros. Do you see it? So Fotros and Poros, they were sent to Rumia, which means the land of the Roman. And Rias and Matthew, they were sent to the land where the people there, they eat people. Where is that? Don't ask. Muhammadan are talking. When Muhammadan are talking, nobody knows what they are talking about. He sent them to, to land where people eat people. Where, where is that? Like Brazil? Nobody knows. And Thomas was sent to the Babylon in the east. And Philippus was sent to Cortagena in Africa. And Yohannes, he was sent to, uh, uh, to the people of the cave. <laughs> and Yaqusobos, Yaqwis, he was sent to Jerusalem. And the son of Tilma, he was sent to the Arabian Peninsula and Hijaz. And Simon was sent to the Berber land, barbarian land. And Yehuda and Bardas were sent to Alexandria and what around it, which means the Egypt. And Allah support them with the proofs. Now let us translate just to show you this this idiot when they when they talk they have no idea what they are saying. Let us translate first to English. Here we go. The one who sent them from they were sent by Jesus, the apostle of Jesus, the disciple where Patras. This is the translation of the word Patras, which is funny. And then the second one is Paul. And he was sent to the Roman. And Andrew, he was sent to the land where people eat people. And Thomas, he was sent to the land of the Babylon. And Philip, he was sent to Africa, etc. And then you will see at the end, after all mentioning, like even he sent to Arabia and etc. You will see that Allah, he supported them. Allah supported Paul. And he made them victorious. So when those who claim to be scholars, they attack Paul, obviously they are not a scholars. They are a bunch of donkeys. They never read their books. Can you show me one single place your prophet, he said, Paul was a bad person? No, you cannot. So why you are lying? And why your Islamic scholars, the old scholars saying Paul was a messenger of Jesus? Let us translate now to the Basha language. And for sure, I do not know how to read it. But you guys translate. Where is the translation? Option translation is gone. Uh, we need uh, how we switch the language. Hmm. Give me a second. I'm trying to switch the language. <clears throat> so we can translate to the Indonesian language, you know. Um, how we switch translation? I know for some reason the the thing switch. Okay, let me open it in different browser. Give me a second. And we will choose. Now to translate to Indonesian. Okay, we open it in different browser. Let us see this time. Translate. We don't want English. 
see it's going right away to English I don't want English right away because that will make it hard to translate hmm. uh, give me a second hold on hold on I did not drink camel urine in the morning this why <clears throat> uh, it's giving me a hard time where is translation where is the option where we can switch translate language setting history <laughs> okay oh, we found it okay translate English uh, change choose another language okay we will choose Basha Indonesian here we go bingo now we found the solution brother we will translate in the front of your eyes why is translating into English? Hold on. Man, oh man. Okay. Again, translate. Choose another language. Choose Indonesian. Okay, translate. Here we go. All right, this is Indonesian language, finally. Read carefully with me, Muslims in Indonesia. This is the Tafsir Al-Qurtubi. This is not a Christian prince saying that. This is not a Jew. This is not a Hindu. This is one of the biggest scholars of Islam. Not like this idiot who did not know how to read his prophet name correctly. And let us see what it says there. As you know, I don't understand your language. But I can make it easy. It says here, that the messengers of Yeshua, Jesus, okay, the Rasul, he sent them, there was Paulus. Paulus was sent to Rome. Do you see it? Do you see it? And then he named all the names after, sent to Africa, sent to etc., sent to Asia, sent to uh, Alexandria, sent to Jerusalem, you name it. And here, by the way, this is, will make it very uh, clear that Muhammadan, when they say that the Bible is corrupted, it's a lie. Why? How does the Bible became everywhere? And those are the disciples of Jesus, who they saw Jesus. How you can corrupt the Bible everywhere? You see, let us say the Muslim, they claim that the king of the Roman, he decided to change the gospel. Okay, what about the king of the Roman who is not, I mean, the Roman are not controlling the whole world. Christian, they went everywhere. They went even to Persia. They went to India. One of the oldest churches, actually, it is in Africa and India, not in Rome. So as you see, the, the, the Bible spread all over. And those people are disciples of God. They will never allow anyone to change the word. So let us say somebody want to change the words in Rome. What about those who live in India? They will agree with Rome, says, okay, we will change it for you. Why anyone? Do you Muslims agree with someone and change? I, I want to change the Quran right now. Do you agree with me to change the Quran? You will say no. No way. We will kill you, actually, if you do that. So this is a stupid claim. Muslims, they come with it always, but they have no base of it. Secondly, they keep attacking Paul. But as you see, Paul in their book was a great messenger of Jesus. And he wanted to ask you, Muslims, how those disciple of jesus they made miracles as the quran chapter 36 verse number 14 says yet they are just disciple of jesus can umar al khattab make a miracle like 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 jesus no and in order to be a prophet or a messenger of god you have to be sent by god not by jesus unless jesus is god so as you see those are disciple of jesus And even if we go in the Quran, we will find that those disciples, they did miracles. They did amazing miracles. And this is Ibn Kathir. And we can show you more books from Ibn Kathir and other interpretation. And look, when Jesus, he sent those messengers, and look what the Quran is saying, that those are messengers of Allah. How Jesus is the one who sent them, but they are messenger of Allah, unless Jesus and Allah is one. 
for sure i for me i refuse to call jesus allah because allah is satan is satan for me one of you he said to me that arab christian they have in their bible translation of the word uh, god as allah this is a translation this is a fraud our god is not allah as simple as that the same as the muslim when they translate the word jesus or yeshua they call him isa but there's nowhere in the quran it says jesus or yeshua it says isa so this is a fraud this is a false translation anyone who who changed the word he make it a, a name is not exist he is making a fraud as simple as that and i understand the christians were under the islamic occupation for 1400 years until now isis but this is not an excuse allah is not exist in the bible for very simple reason allah is the name of the god of the muslims is not the word mean god so if you want to tell me I am a Christian, I'm using the word Allah as a word mean God. I don't mean the God of Muslims. I understand, but still this is wrong. I understand you will say to me, it's about what I meant, it's about what I meant, not what I said. I understand, but still this is wrong, especially now you know it's wrong. So here we notice that those people who attack Christianity and claiming that Christianity is something created by Paul, we see that the name of Paul is all over their books and he was a great man. How the messengers of Jesus, they became messengers of Allah. Do Jesus have authority to make me a prophet? To make me messenger of God? Unless he is God. And this is all is about them. So those people, when they make a claim, their claim is funny, it's silly. They are like a bunch of kids who they are like bullying somebody, you know, like a bully. You know what a bully he do? He just want to make a fun of you, but he himself is a stupid. He's an idiot. So the first time that the word the Christians appear in Nicaea, but you just quote for me a verse, you idiot, saying that those are disciple of Jesus. So how this is the first time in Nicaea, you donkey? Verses number 24 to 26. Listen, Prince, if you find in the Bible that Jesus is a Christian, a new serious BMW will be yours. Second, nearly all Christians as well as you go to the church on Sunday. My question is, which verse in the gospel that solves the commandment of Allah or Jesus to go to church on Sunday? If there is, please choose a new series, BMW. Okay, let us show you that this idiot is a certified donkey again. He is saying, like, what, what is the point of this question? You need to ask yourself first, what is the point? The point is that Christians, they are celebrating Sunday, but they should not celebrate Sunday. Okay, can you show us from the Quran what day Allah, he says to the Christian to celebrate? You do not know. And if I show you from the Bible, why we Christian we celebrate Sunday, you will not understand because you are a donkey. And let me explain to you, my friend, Sabbath is not a word means Saturday. Sabbath is the rest day. It's called Sabbath in Hebrew is a word mere rest. Sabbath is a word mere rest. So God, he created the whole universe and he have the Sabbath as the day where he stopped working. God don't need to rest, but here rest means that everything is done. But for us as a human, Sabbath is a rest day. So if we say, if we go in the Bible, we'll find many verses, but I don't know if I need really to... Uh, to show you a verse from the Bible when you do not even know. You are quoting me act, but yet you do not know, understand that this act is not in the time of Nikia. This is act in the time of Paul and Barnabas. So if I quote for you some verses from the Bible, are you going to understand or you will not? Obviously you will not. Because you choose not to understand. You don't want to understand. The seventh day, the seventh day, 
is Sabbath, whatever it is. The seventh day, the day you choose to be your rest day, is a Sabbath. Now, I will go with you as a Muslim first. Just to show everybody that we can defeat Islam by using Islam without even touching the Bible. This is Ibn Kathir. Chapter 16, verse number 124. Now this idiot, he will say to me, he don't agree with Islam. Islam is stupid. Right? He will say, I, I ask you from the Bible, why you are showing me from Islam? They know, we will show you from the Bible and we are showing you first from Islam because this is your religion. So if you don't agree with Islam, you are the Muslim no more. And that's the whole point. Read carefully. The prescription of the Sabbath for the Jews. Read with me, donkey. Learn how to read. There's no doubt that for every nation, Allah prescribed one day of the week for the people. Who is the one who prescribed Allah? To gather and to worship Him. For this Ummah, Ummah in Arabic means nation, which means the Muslims, He prescribed Friday because it is the sixth day. <laughs> Friday what oh, guys did he say Friday is the sixth day did he say that the Friday is a sixth day okay but the Bible says that God he rest in the seventh day so you are going against God yourself It is the sixth day of what? The sixth day of a creation. Allah created the, the, in six days. And then in the Quran, I will show you the verses. Allah, he stopped working supposedly in the seventh day, not in the sixth day. So why the sixth day is the day of rest? That's me, Muhammad is a fraud. In which Allah, he completed and perfected his creation. Okay, but this is not, see, he's still working. He finished Friday, actually, according, according to, uh, to, uh, to uh, we will show you the hadith. According to Muhammad, Allah, he finished creating. The last thing he created, it was Adam. And Allah, he forgot about Eve. In a Friday afternoon, let us go. See, if I show them from the Bible, they will say we don't agree with the Bible anyway. Now, what they will say? They will say we don't agree with Muhammad. This is the point of showing them their stupidity from their own stupid books. Here we go. This is Allah. He created. He's, this is the creation of Allah, supposedly. How it work? And here, by the way, there's a huge mistake Muhammad he made, proving to us again that he's a false prophet. Allah created the clay on Saturday. Which day? Saturday. And he created the mountains in Sunday, and he created the trees. Let us let, let us put a, 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 a sign next to each day. <clears throat> All right. So Allah he created the, the clay in Sunday, Saturday. Okay, Saturday. Let us start from here. Okay, and created the mountains in Sunday and then he created the trees in Monday and then he created things entirely in labor in Tuesday he created the light in Wednesday see Wednesday let us uh, take the mark from here put it under Wednesday so no confusion what happened and then he caused the animal to spread in Thursday and then he created Adam Friday afternoon. Okay, so why you are taking Friday as rest day when Allah did not finish yet in Friday? Sabbath is a word mere rest day. So how this became your holiday when Allah did not finish in Saturday? As, I mean, sorry, in the Friday. Let us count how many words here we have. 
how many days just to show you that Muhammad is a false prophet too number one is Saturday this is day number one I'm typing in Arabic hold on this is day number one right be my witness okay Sunday is number two this is day number two Monday is number three Tuesday is number four. Wednesday is number five. And he created Adam in Friday. Sorry, I missed I missed a day. And Thursday, sorry, Thursday. And he spread the animals in Thursday. This is number six. And then he created Adam in a Friday afternoon. This is seven. But Muhammad he claimed that Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days. That's mean the creation of Allah was seven days, not six. And as long he finish in Friday afternoon. So which day is the day he rested? Uh, somebody saying you don't dare to debate my friend you can call me right now we will laugh we will die laughing where are you i bet you you don't dare to debate mufti you just let him call me we will we will die laughing i challenge you actually to go to him and tell him christian prince he invite you to debate him mufti ismail is that is this person is exist for real where is he so look at this as long as Allah he finished Friday his work. So which day was his rest day? People, you tell me. As long as Allah he finished Friday. So which day he is going to rest now? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Which day Allah finished? Friday. This is the day he finished. Friday. Okay. So what is the day after Friday, Saturday? So you must and you should have saturday as your prayer day because sabbath is what is a, what, what this is what sabbath mean i mean look at the stupid religion they took the word sabbath and they put it in their arabic language they do not know that the word sabbath mere rest so how sabbath is a word mere rest and you work in saturday by adopting the word sabbath in your religion you adopted the meaning So your God, Allah, he stopped working in Sabbath. So why you are celebrating Friday? Secondly, your prophet, he confirmed that it took Allah seven days to finish. Now we go back. Uh, <clears throat> to show you more points. If we go back here in Ibn Kathir, I hope the text is if Ibn Kathir is clear. I know it's a small. Let me see if I can make it bigger. I think this is big. This is better, right? All right. Let me be sure that you guys you don't miss anything from the page. All right. So for sure, for sure, no doubt that every nation Allah prescribed one day of the week. For people to gather and worship him. For this Ummah, he prescribed Friday. Show me where it says that. We will die laughing in a second. Nowhere in the Quran, Allah, he says, gather in Friday as your rest day. Nowhere. And I will show you. There is only one verse speaking about praying in Friday, but this is not about this verse proving that Muslims should pray in Saturday. Prescribe Friday because it is the sixth day. So what, so what if it's a sixth day? Anyone can tell me? How it was, how because it is sixth day and this is became the day of a prayer. You tell me. Stupid. I mean, th this is how you explain. This is how it became the day of prayer because it's sixth day. Stupidity. In which Allah completes perfect his creation. Okay. But no. Allah did not perfect his creation in the sixth day. 
he finished by the start of the seventh day because Saturday he was still working. I mean Friday. So how you can count it? And actually the story I can show you even from Ibn Kathir where it says insanu ajula that a human he asked Allah to finish him so fast because a human was ever hasty. What does that mean? When Allah was creating Adam, Adam, he woke up or opened his eyes and he said to Allah in chapter 17, verse number 11, uh, finish me Allah before the sunset. Finish me Allah before the sunset. How we can find the story if it's true or not? Let us go to the interpretation in chapter 17, verse number 11, Ibn Kathir. So by the sunset still Allah is still working and you know or in case you do not know uh, the day the day end by sunset not like now at 12 midnight you know what I mean the day end by sunset so here we go وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Read with me and laugh. I'm trying to make the page big as much as I can so you can read with me carefully and you will be able to see it. I hope the text is clear for you. Okay, let us read the story. It was reported from Salman al Farisi from Ibn Abbas and Ibn Abbas. They say the story of Adam. When he went to get up before his soul reached his feet, when his soul was breathed into him, it entered his body, and from his head downward, when it reached his brain, he sneezed, Hachu! And he said, Alhamdulillah! Hey, Adam, he speak Arabic. You believe it? Adam, he speak Arabic. He said, Alhamdulillah. Okay, Arabic wasn't exist at that time. And Allah said to him, May your Lord have mercy on you, Adam. When it reached his eyes, he opened them, and he would reach his body and limbs, he start look, stare at them in wonder. He wanted to get up before it reached his feet, but he could not. So he said, Allah, Allah, finish me before the sunset. <laughs> Do you see it? This is your book, Ibn Kathir. So until the sunset, the night is coming and Allah did not finish yet. And by the way, here there's a stupid mistake. Anyone notice? Because the sunset came and Allah is just creating Adam. What about Eve? If Allah, he finished creating Adam before the sunset or in the last moment of the sunset, which means the last moment in the day. So Eve must be created the second day. Correct? <laughs> because as we know that the Muslims agree that Allah, he created Eve from the ribs of Adam. And this is a story, the story from the Old Testament. So as long Adam was created in the last moment of a creation in that day, which is a Friday afternoon, that means Eve was finished in Saturday or created in Saturday. And that means Muhammad is an idiot. He forgot about Eve. Now, we go back to Ibn Kathir, the one is speaking about every day, Allah, he prescribed a day for every nation. Okay, tell us more, Ibn Kathir. In which Allah completed, perfected his creation. On this day, he gathered and he completed his blessing and uh, of, for his servant. It was said that Allah prescribed the day of children of Israel through his prophet Moses. But they changed it and they chose Saturday. People, do you see the stupidity? Ibn Kathir saying that Allah, he gave them Friday and the Jews, they choose Saturday. Let us go to the Quran and show you that Islam is written by a bunch of donkeys. Isn't it the Quran says that Allah, he punished the Jews, he made them pigs and monkeys for they broke the Sabbath, you idiot. So how the Jews changed it from, from Friday to Saturday? Chapter 2. 
verse number 65. Read it. For they break the Sabbath, Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys. For what? For breaking the Sabbath. So if Sabbath was not prescribed for the Jews, why Allah punished them for breaking the Sabbath? You can open the, the number of those verses in your language like English. We are just showing the Indonesian here. Chapter 2, verse number 65. And here you notice that those who explain the Quran, they are a bunch of donkeys. Because he just said that the Jews, Allah, he gave them Friday, but they broke Friday, they, they choose Saturday. Read carefully, it's not me who's saying that. But this is totally what the opposite of the Quran. Read carefully. It says, Allah prescribed this day for the children of Israel through his prophet, but they change it and choose Saturday. Allah, he chose which day? Friday for the Jews. This is what Ibn Kathir is saying. And they choose to change it to Saturday. That's mean the Quran is a lie. The Quran is a corrupt. Because the Quran says that Allah, he ordered the Jews not to work in Sabbath. Read carefully. And then he says, It was the day which he created and did not create anything. As he had completed his creation on Friday, Allah, he made observe of the Sabbath obligatory for them. In the laws of the Torah, hold on, a second ago you said you changed it to Saturday. Now you are saying he made it obligatory. I mean, are you mentally ill? Here he's saying that they choose to change it to Saturday. They change it, read carefully. They change it and he made it, they made it Saturday. A line after he say, Allah, he made them observe Saturday. Do you believe it? Do you believe this chapiti? How they are the one who choose Saturday and they change it and then you say Allah he made them observe Sabbath obligatory for them in the law which means in the Torah and the Torah is coming from who? From Allah supposedly. So how you say they are the one who change it? Telling them to keep the Sabbath this, at the same time he told them to follow Muhammad. He told them to follow Muhammad in the time of Moses. And he was sent and he took a promise and covenant in that effect. Allah, he took a covenant with the Jews to follow Muhammad. Now let's continue here. The Sabbath was only prescribed for those who differed concerning it. Uh -huh. Mujahid said, they observed the Sabbath Saturday and ignore Friday. But isn't it your Quran saying that Allah, he ordered them? Allah, he forced them? What about the story of those fishermen? Chapter 7, verse 163, where those men, they did fishing on Saturday, so Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys. And he is the one who made the, 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 the fish come and dance, uh, uh, belly dancing in front of them in the water. In that day, chapter 7, verse 163. Do you see the stupidity? So Allah, he made the Jews for a Saturday because they change it to Saturday. So Allah agree with them. Do you see the stupidity and the madness? Do you see the madness? So now if I change it to Sunday, going by the logic of the Quran, that means Allah, he will agree with me and he will force me to follow Sunday. If I change it tomorrow to Monday, Allah will agree with me and he forced me to follow Monday. This is the logic. Stupidity is amazing. Let's continue. Read, 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 and die laughing. Okay. So, and then, uh, they observe it Saturday until Allah sent the Isa. Okay, what happened? He sent the Isa, son of Maryam. It was said he told them to change it to Sunday. <laughs> what the donkey, Mr. Insan, will do now? According to your Islamic religion, it was Isa who told us to make it Sunday, you idiot.
Who is the one who taught the Christian to make it Sunday? Isa. So now what we will say? We have to choose either uh, Mr. Insan is a certified donkey or he is a certified camel because this person should not ask questions complaining about them why we are celebrating Sunday when his book saying that Isa is the one who ordered us to pray in Sunday. Can you show me where you, you are the one who just said, show me one verse where Isa, he said to you, pray in Sunday. Okay, here we go. Show me where Isa, he said, pray for me in Sunday. Stupid is amazing. And now we can quote many verses from the Bible about the reason Christians, they are uh, uh, doing the day of worship in Sunday. The Bible, you see the word Sabbath is any day you have celebration for God. As an example, when, when, when the Messiah was crucified, many who do not know how to read the Bible carefully, they think that it says that the second day is Sabbath. Sabbath is not a Saturday. It was a holiday. Any day you designate to God is called Sabbath for the Jews. So let us say I have an occasion. It is Easter, but Easter when is going to be Sunday. That is Sabbath. Even though it is Sunday as day, it is Sabbath. Let us say I have an occasion. Uh, Jesus uh, fast in the day of etc. Let us say it was uh, Tuesday. That is Sabbath. If I observe that day as a day for God. So th Sabbath is any day you decide to make it for God. So the rest day, which is the day you give to God, is that Sabbath. It's not necessarily to be Saturday or Sunday. For the Jews, it was a strict because already they are following their own calendar. But in the same time, the Jews still, they do Sabbath, which is not Saturday. Only ignorant, they think that Sabbath for the Jews was only Saturday. It was not. As an example, the Passover, the festival, the Jews they have, it's not it's not Saturday. Actually, most of the holiday of the Jews, which is called Sabbath, is not even Saturday. So Sabbath can mean two things. A regular day in the week, which we call Saturday, or it can be any holiday, a day designated for God. That is Sabbath. But look here what we found that Isa is the one who told the Christians to observe Sunday. Okay, why? Muslims do not know. And it was also said that he did not forsake the law of the Torah except for a few, for a few ruling, which were abrogated, and he continued to observe Sabbath until it was taken up into heaven. After the word, the Christians at the time of Constantine were the one changed it to Sunday. And look here how the Muslims, they are confusing the Muslims. A second ago they said that it was Isa who ordered the Christians to change to Sunday. And now they are saying, no, maybe. This is the religion of maybe. But look what Muhammad did. Muhammad, he got them always busted. We are the least and we are the first. And the day of resurrection, even though they were given the book before us. The day Allah obligated upon them, but they differed concerning it. Allah guide us into these days, and the people observe their days after us. The Jews are following the day, the following day, and the Christians the day after that. It was the order of Allah. Actually, in Arabic, it says, Allah, Allah, He deceived the Christians. And the Jews from choosing or from following uh, 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 Friday. Read carefully. Allah led the people who came before us astray, stray from Friday. So the Jews had Saturday and the Christians had Sunday. So it was Allah's decision, you donkey. Do you see it?
Now, if Saturday and Sunday are bad days, can you explain to me why your prophet used to fast in Saturday and Sunday? Let me find the hadith. Why Muhammad was fasting in those days and then he changed? Read carefully. Why he was not fasting Saturday? Sorry, Friday. This is Sahih Muslim and we can show it. This is Sahih. This is not weak. So don't play the game of week. Read carefully. It was a Friday from which Allah diverted those who were before us. Allah diverted us from them. For the Jews, the day set aside for a prayer was Sabbath. Who is the one who did that? Allah. And for the Christian, it was Sunday. And Allah turned toward us and guided us to Friday. And this donkey is asking, why you Christian don't you, you are celebrating on Sunday? But it is your God who made us Sunday according to your prophet. And then, look at this. It says here. Uh, let us see. Let us see about the fasting. Let me find the fasting hadith. Uh, here we go. But I want to show you more strong reference. Just give me a second. <clears throat> anyway, this one is, is fine. Let us see. Okay, let's go to this one. Here we go. You're a prophet saying the following. Um Salama narrated, this is the wife of your prophet saying, the messenger of Allah used to fast more often on Saturday and Sunday. Question, why? And then Muhammad suddenly, he decided that those are the day of those who associate with Allah. <laughs> so why he changed? Why he, Muhammad, was fasting Saturday and Sunday and then suddenly, right now you remember that they are the day of the Christian and the Jews and they are associating with Allah? All this time you forgot? And now the question for all the Muslims, why Muhammad was fasting Saturday and Sunday? It's a challenge to answer. At that moment, Muhammad was looking for a religion. Muhammad is a fraud. He's trying to adopt others. He's trying to copy them. As an example, if we search for Ashura, Ashura, the pagan used to, uh, uh, to fast. And Muhammad, he told them that Ashura, if you fast it, Allah will forgive your sin for the last year. And then later, read really carefully, look, it says, the Messenger of Allah was asked about observing uh, uh, Ashura. He said it is, uh, will, 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 like, will take all the sin of one year before it. Let us see. Huh, look at this. He came with Ramadan, he threw away Ashura. Read carefully, this is Sahir Bukhari. Quraysh used to fast the day of Ashura. Okay, but Ashura, uh, Quraysh is uh, kuffar, they are pagan. Why they are fasting Ashura? What is Ashura? In the pre-Islamic er, 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 period. And the Messenger of Allah used to fast too. He's fasting for who? To the idols? When he came to the Medina, he fasted that day and ordered others to fast too. Later, when the fasting month of Ramadan was prescribed, he gave it up the fasting of the day of Ashura <laughs> and became optional. So how it was, you know, like a must to do and even will forgive one year of your sin, which is very stupid and funny to say. I fast one day, all my sin for the last year goes. 
And then because you create, you come with a new idea, it's called Ramadan, you throw Ashura in the garbage and now it's not important, will not forgive your, your, your sin for a year. And then it's optional. Do you see it? Actually, uh, there's a hadith which is showing us how much the Muslims confuse. Let me treat it to five to five. I don't want to flip the pages and, and, and give you a headache in your eyes. Let me find it. Uh, <clears throat> when Muhammad, he came to the city of Medina, he saw the Jews fasting. Here we go. Read and read and laugh. When the Allah, Allah Apostle, he came to Medina, this is Sahih Bukhari, they can't say it is weak and this garbage, you know. He found the Jews observing the fast of the day of Ashura in the 10th of Muharram. The Prophet asked them about it. They replied, this day, he didn't know about it. Muslims, look at this, he's a prophet of God, he's learning from the Jews. He asked them about it. They replied, this is the day when Moses became victorious over Pharaoh. The prophet said to the Muslims, we are nearer to Moses than they. So fast this day. Muhammad is fabricating religion. The Jews are fasting this day. Just because they told you, we fast this day. You fasted too? Do you see it? And then Muhammad, he throw it away. And what about Muhammad promising if you fast this day, Allah will forgive your sin for a year? Let us find the other hadith. Hold on. Because I don't want to say something without giving proofs. Here we go. Read. Read and laugh. If you fast the day of Ashura, which he just learned from the Jews, that will delete, erase the sin of you for the last year. Do you see it? But the guy, he just learned from the Jews about it. So where did he come with this? If you fast this day, Allah will delete your sin for a year. Guys, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? I just learned from the Jews that this day is a day they fast in Ashura. And then the second day I tell them that if you fast your day, this day, Allah will erase your sin for a year. Do you see it? That's mean he's lying. He just learned about it. He don't even know what the occasion is. Muhammad, he don't even know why they are fasting this day. They, he asked him why you are fasting this day. Read it. And this is Sahir Bukhari. They can't say it's a lie. Why you are fasting this day of Ashura? The Prophet asked him about it. They replied, this is the day where Moses become victorious over Pharaoh. Okay, why Allah did not tell him about this day? And if the Jews are fasting this day, shouldn't he ask them, did Allah order you to, to, to fast this day or not? What if they are fabricating? Ah, Muhammad is the copy-paste man. And then he fabricate additional story for the story saying, oh, okay, if you fast this day, Allah will erase your sin for the last year. Okay, and then he came with Ramadan and suddenly this day is not important. How a day will erase your sin for one year became not important now? How we can throw such a day in the garbage? So when this idiot saying to me, why you are praying on Sunday, that is because of your stupidity, my friend. Any day, any day is for God, is Sabbath. It can be Sunday, it can be Tuesday, it can be Monday. God, he don't care really. You see, what Jesus says about Sabbath. Let us teach you some wisdom. Jesus said, Sabbath was made for the man. 
not the man was made for Sabbath. And your stupidity is amazing. Learn the wisdom of Christ. What does that mean? If you go to Mark chapter 2, and this is, exists in, in many places, you will see how Jesus explained to the donkeys like those who claim to be knowledgeable. He said to them, who is talking? The Messiah. The Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. Sabbath is a day of rest made for the man. God don't really care. God, he wants you to live better. People, they are obsessed with making money and working 24 hours, 7 days a week if they can. So God, he forced them by saying, if you want to follow me, you take a day, you and your servants and your employees, stop worshipping money, stop going after money. So this day was made for the man, not the man was made for the day. You Muslims make the man made for a day. When God, everything he created, it's created for the man. You see, you know, if we go in the Quran, just to show you the, the difference in the logic between us as a Christians and the followers of the pagan Muhammad. Why the man is created in Islam? To worship Allah. Why the man is created in Christianity? To rejoice with God. وَمَا خَلَقْتَ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنْ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا I did not create a human and the genie except to worship me. That is the only reason. Chapter 51, verse number 56. Do you see it, Muslims? So the difference between Christianity and Islam is a huge. Allah in Islam is just a lonely person. He wants people to worship him. He is a mad person. He is a crazy person. He want to have fun. So he decided to create us. And then if we don't do what he do, he will start barbecuing us and enjoy torturing. He's a, he's, he's a maniac. He's sick. In Christianity, no. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. He loved what? He loved the world. Which world? Indonesia, every country, all people. All the act of God in Christianity is about God loving us. This is why we Christians, when we pray, we say, Our Father. You see, a relationship with, with God in Christianity is about Father. Not a God who is sick. He created me just to worship Him. Why? He's lonely? Yes, He is. We worship God. We obey God. But God do not need slaves. He do not need us anyway. Our God is all about love. For God so loved the world, so he sent his only begotten son. To do what? To save us. You see how much love there? In Islam, Allah, he created you for a very simple reason. Allah is bored. He need, he need, he need the, uh, Netflix. You are Netflix for Allah. Actually, there's a hadith. I would like to share it with you, Muslims, Muhammadan. And when you, when you see it, you will die laughing. Let me find the hadith. Give me a second. <coughs> All right. Um, I'm trying just to find it. Give me a second. 
<clears throat> Madness. Muslims read with me, so you may understand. And this is your Islamic website. I will post the link actually for you. Let me pause the link for whoever want to read and learn. And you can use Google Translation to translate your language. Read carefully. Hadith lawlaka. There's a question about the hadith lawlaka. What this hadith is? What lawlaka mean? If not you. If not, you. Question. Was respected ulama of the religion and sharia. What they say about this hadith? What hadith? Lawlaka ma khalaqta al-aflaq. Okay, which is in the book of the hadith? Which a person is asking, a Muslim is asking. The answer does it say that if not Muhammad, if not Muhammad, Allah will not create anything. Answer indeed, the Prophet of Allah, Allah pray for him and salute him, is the reason for the creation of Adam and the universe. You Muslim worship a man, his name is Muhammad. Allah is lonely. He created a man, he like him, his name is Muhammad. He's a spoiled son maybe and then he told muhammad okay i'm going to create the universe just for you okay do you like it muhammad he said okay i like it and then it says if the prophet of allah allah pray on him and salute him was not to exist then the arsh the kursi the chair the chair of allah even the chair of allah allah will be without a chair standing until now the word the, the pen of allah the sky the earth the heaven the hell the trees the stones all of those will not exist so Allah in the Quran he created a human being to worship who obviously to worship Muhammad do you see it and just to show you another sickness and here they are confirming even more like more stories you can read the whole page it's, it make you sick it make you will you, you know you, you will have you will, you will vomit but Muhammad he made it even more clear about his sick God he said Explain why Allah He created you Muslims according to the Muhammad story. Read and, and laugh. When the Quran says we create nothing, we create you not except to worship. Read it. This is Quran chapter 51, verse number 56. And those who speak English, please, you can like open the page on your side. I'm just trying to help the Indonesian here. So chapter 51, verse number 56, confirm that the reason Allah, he created you is to worship him. All right. But now if we go in the hadith, look what kind of worship he want. Your God, Allah, is a sick person. By him who's talking Muhammad, not Christian prince, Abu Huraira reported messenger of Allah saying, have say, saying, by him whose hand is my life. If you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness for Allah. And then he will burn in them. So what is the purpose of creating you, Muslims? Allah wants you to sin. And so you sin all day long. You have sex. You do drugs. You kill. You steal, and then at the end of the day, you say, Allah forgive me, please, Allah forgive me, forgive me. I kiss the black stone, Allah forgive your sin, that's it. Allah don't want people not to sin, he want the earth to be filled of sinners. Allah is the devil, as you see. Christians, did God, did the Messiah create us so we will do sin? Or he said, be holy like your father. Be holy like your father in heaven. This is, what, this, this is the command of Christ. Allah, he wants you to be filthy. If you don't become filthy, Allah will kill you. Read it. Is this as a weak hadith? No, this is sahih.
What kind of God he want me to commit sin unless if I don't commit sin, he will kill me. Why? And by the way, this is opposed the story which Muhammad, he took from the Bible. You see here, Muhammad, when he talk, he, he don't talk, he do poo-poo. Muhammad is making poo, poo now. Because if this is why Allah will sweep you out of the earth, then why God, he sweep those who they are called the story of Noah in the Quran? Isn't it because they are committing sin? See the stupidity? According to Muhammad, this is not the reason. He wants them to commit sin, actually. But he wants them to ask him for forgiveness. <laughs> Very silly, stupid questions. Uh, uh, let me show you here, a Muslim is making a comment. Just to show you, how Muslims they try to answer us Christianity teaching is not consistent Jesus taught you guys to love your enemy but here I got mocked by your student so which are one is a true mock or love you see what is mockery for you is love for us when we are showing you that your prophet is a stupid for you this is a mockery but this is your problem not my problem my Lord the Messiah said love your enemy but he said pray for them to see the truth and show them the truth and rebuke them so for you if I say Muhammad is a fraud and I prove it to you this is a mockery loving the enemy my friend is not about giving you a kiss is about making you waking up and by the way we don't consider you an enemy you consider us an enemy Quran chapter 5 verse 51 say take not Christians and Jews as a friends for they are the enemy of Allah so you are upset because you have no answer and what do you do now you complain uh, mockery there is mockery uh, mockery you are the one who call us pigs monkeys to far nudges filthy like animals in the Quran and yet you are talking about mockery the second we share the truth with you you start to cry like a child You are following the God of mockery, the man of mockery. What you see in the front of you is a mockery on you. Allah, he wants you right now to go and rent a woman to do muta with her. Otherwise, Allah will kill you. If you don't commit sin, this is what your prophet is saying. If you don't commit sin every day, Allah will destroy you. Do you see it? How you accept this man to be a prophet? He is encouraging you to commit sin. All what he's saying, commit sin, commit sin, but ask Allah for forgiveness. That's it. Do you see it? So instead of giving me answers for the stupidity of your prophet, you cry. Okay, cry. What I can do for you? But I have nothing to do against you. I mean, I don't know you. Do I know you? I, you don't know me. I don't know you. Nothing personal here. We're talking about religion, about God, about truth. Right? Uh, save it please the cover CP is every uh, this is uh, you see this guy actually the, the guy who called himself ultimate truth this guy is not even a Muslim he make fun of the hadith of his prophet he fabricate Quran and he follow Rashad Khalifa who took verses from the Quran and he don't accept anyone to explain the Quran except him that is a false Muslim even the Muslim agree the one who reject those things he is out of Islam so you are the last one to talk about Islam I don't talk to you because you're a kid we spoke to you a million times I mean how many videos we have of you me saying the most stupid things ever people are dying laughing at you and you are like a bug keep coming <laughs> and you think because I don't let you touch my feet that's because you are powerful you know uh, ultimate fart let me tell you once I was in Asia actually and I saw a cockroach a huge one and people are not stepping on him and I was saying to myself ah, I think this cockroach now he would think that he is the most powerful creature because those tall men and women they are avoiding stepping on him and they are like look the cockroach this is how you are I don't want to make my feet dirty with you anymore I just I want the floor with you already your videos are all over now like, you know, you can say that if I never spoke to you, never talked to you. Already your videos is all over, you idiot. 
you are just a kid and and, and learn when you sleep to, to speak to people in your in your videos not to sleep in your bed shame on you this is what your parents taught you learn from mr insan he don't uh, sleep in the bed and talk be decent like mr insan <laughs> anyway uh so guys do you see how the Muslims, they are desperately trying to find something against Christianity? This is what you have against us, that we are celebrating, worshipping God in Sunday? But you did not tell us where Allah, he says to you, worship him Friday. Let us go to the Quran and die laughing at the stupidity of this guy. If we go in the Quran, we will find one verse speaking about praying on Friday. One verse. But this verse proved to us what? Prove to us that Muslims should pray in Saturday. Their day is Saturday, not Friday. Read carefully. Chapter 62, verse number 9. I do not know what the translation is saying in, in the Indonesian language. You can read it. But in Arabic it says, I will translate, All those who believe, when you are called for a prayer, in the day of a Friday, come to Allah and leave everything in your hand. In your hand, guys, does it say that in Indonesian? Does it say that? Is the translation there correct? When you are called for a Friday prayer, leave everything in your hand from business and come to Allah. Okay, how Allah He forced the Jews not to do any business on Friday, but Muslims in, in Saturday, but Muslims are doing business on Friday. Or what He's saying in time of the prayer. Come and pray. Isn't it the Quran says that those Jews who do fishing to feed their kids, Allah, he made them pigs and monkeys. So Muslims, they do fishing, they do work on Friday. As you see in the verse in front of you, confirming that, or oh, what he is saying, when we call you for the prayer on Friday, leave everything in your hand and come. Now, what happened here? Anyone knows what is behind this story? What is behind this story? What is behind this story is that Muhammad, he used to pray in Saturday. And the Muslim, they used to pray in Saturday. But this is the daily prayer. Muslim, they have daily prayer and they have a special day for gathering. In a Friday, Muhammad have a problem to make the Muslims gather to, do, to pray. Why? Because by sunset, it's going to be Saturday. So what the people do? People, they go do shopping before everyone stop working. For when sunset in Friday, it is already Saturday. So Muhammad have difficulty to make people come to pray on Friday. For the second day is Saturday and nobody go to work. And the proof in the front of you. Why Muslims have difficulty in Friday? You tell me. Why only Friday? Why Muhammad did not say, you Muslim, you pray every day. And you have to go to the mosque too, if you can. What, what is the point of a Friday? The point is the second day is Saturday. And all businesses are closed. Before we go to this verse here, if we go to different... About this verse here. Chapter 16, verse number 124, Tafsir al-Jalalain. You will see it says, The Sabbath was only prescribed for, in other words, in the, construct, in, in the uh, construction was made obligatory for those who offered concerning to their prophet, those were the Jews. And they were com com uh, commanded to devote themselves solely to the worship on Friday. But they said, we don't want that. And they choose Saturday. <laughs> And then Allah, he forced them to do it in Saturday. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, Jesus said, when you want to pray, go to your closet. And don't be like the hypocrite who pray in the corners. This is exactly what Muhammad and today they do. You will see a Muhammad and he put a rag in the top of his taxi just to show everybody his brain. In the top of the taxi. Not only in the corner, in the top of the taxi. In the park, in the street. While Jesus, he ordered us to do the opposite. When you want to pray, don't go and make a scandal about it. When you fast, don't 
tell everybody you are fasting why you want to do that you're fasting to God or you're fasting to show people you are praying to God or you want to show people that you are a good guy who pray this is what the Muslims they do so I want to ask you mr. Abdul where Allah in the Quran said with a clear verse you have to follow Friday Friday is your day can you show me the verse the verse I showed you have nothing to do with that when you are called for Friday come if you go to the book of Asbab al Nizul, this is a chapter 62 verse number 9 Let us go there. Even the chapter is called a Friday. Funny. Ah, it's Babin Nazul here. There's no translation. Let us see. Tafsir al Give me a second. <clears throat> Where is the answer? Oh, this is uh, verse number one. Hold on. Uh. <clears throat> when you believe when the call of, of Friday made in Friday don't hasten to uh, set off and remember Allah okay where is the day where, where Allah he prescribed for you the day of Friday nowhere let us go to Asbab al nuzul the reason for the verses to come down Asbab al nuzul mean the reason for verses to come down there is no reason Muslim could not understand it why what happened on Friday nobody go why because Saturday is tomorrow and by sunset all stores close but why Muslims are worried about Saturday unless they are following the Jews who they are and they are living between them <laughs> what is special about Saturday if you don't observe Saturday but they buy in Friday all their shopping because Saturday they cannot do any any work and this is when Muhammad was trying to copy the Jews you know if you remember and we can show you tons of example about the fraud of Muhammad how Muhammad he changed his religion just to uh, 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 you know just because of a Jew as an example Muhammad he was standing praying in a funeral of a Muslim and this is a Sahih Hadith and this is exists all over as you see it's not like something they can say it's weak so the message of Allah used to stand up for a funeral, entered the crops were placed in the grave. A learned Jew. Do you see the word learned Jew? What learned Jew mean? Rabbi. A, le a learned Jew mean Rabbi. Once passed, passed by him and he said, this is how we do it. What he said? This is how we do it. The Prophet sat down and said, sit down, sit down, act differently. Now, hold on. He used to pray, standing for the funeral. Is that a practice he was doing because of Allah told him or he's fabricating a prior way? If this is from Allah, then he should not change it just because of a Jew. He said, this is how we do it. The guy did not even debate Muhammad. The guy, he did not argue with Muhammad. The guy, he did not disagree with Muhammad. All what he said, this is how we do it. There's a music, it fit with this, uh, this is how we do it. I cannot find it. I don't know which one. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Uh, do it. This is how we do it. Uh, that's it. 
the guy he just said to you this is how we do it you change it immediately and you say sit down sit down act differently in a second Islam changed just because a Jew he said this is how we do it so the question is you were doing it like this why obviously he was making up a prayer his, his, his God is not telling him anything the Jew Muhammad because he is he felt guilty now oh they got me busted I'm copying them uh oh the Jew he said this is how we do it that's mean I'm copying them obviously hello so sit down sit down act differently okay from now on we act differently okay what a fraud so if Allah told you you pray like this so what if they say to you this is how we do it so what if I am praying to Jesus and a Muslim walk by and he say this is how we do it so what the problem why I need to change it because Muhammad is a fraud in a second he changed all the rules this is how we do it everything you caught is about test guys look at the look at the Muslim answers uh, just be, be be the judge look at this guy al, al uh, naziki uh, faith he said everything you caught is about a test guys is that about a test i mean i'm quoting for you something stupid you said to me it's about test what test we must have thousands of, ch of challenges to do to do sins but if we muslims can win against sin we will get thawab okay hold on you muslims been encouraged to do sin i just showed you the hadith what's wrong with you isn't it your prophet he said that if you don't do sin allah will destroy you did i show you that or not what's wrong with you are you brainless is that your prophet talking or me if your God he encouraged you to fight sin so how he said if you don't commit sin Allah will destroy you how you are against sin and Allah saying if you don't commit sin I will kill you tell me please help me you see I'm, I'm, I'm really maybe this is himself maybe this is insan mr. insan trying to refute me using different name Help me, help me. I want to see how Islam is against sin and Allah will kill you if you don't commit sin. Hmm? I'm waiting for your answer. Your amazing answer. So they lie to you. They say Islam is against sin. The fact is the opposite. Muhammad is encouraging you to do sin. Allah is encouraging you and you cannot you cannot uh, uh, you cannot deny it it's in front of you so now if I don't do sin Allah will destroy me so what Allah what will make Allah happy I go and commit sin and ask Allah for forgiveness Oh, what Allah care for is not you committing sin. He want people to beg for him. Oh, please, Allah forgive me. <laughs> Allah is lonely. And now look at you. Suddenly you have no answer. Guys, the video became long. So maybe we can make it uh, two pieces and we continue with the video of this guy tomorrow. What do you think? Because it's getting late for people in, the, in Indonesia. Excuse me. Excuse me. Shall we continue tomorrow the same video, maybe? So we can laugh more. We don't want to be out of comedy. I don't know how many views you have in the previous video we made, which were uh, actually the video we made just two days ago and is enough to make tons of Muslims leave Islam. Thousands and uh, millions. Clear, it's very clear. And uh, uh, by the way, like by the time we finished the video yesterday, the day, two days before, uh, we have like 7,000 view, right? Life. 
and then we got a strike from YouTube for copyright. You know, so I the good thing is I was able to download it and load it again. Otherwise, we would lose it. So YouTube blocked me because I was using Mr. Bean, I think. You see, this is Mr. Bean. I mean, YouTube, why you are upset? This is Mr. Bean. Look at Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean saying, you have to commit sin, otherwise Allah will kill you. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? If we call Zach and Naik and we ask him about, the, about, about this hadith, what he will say? For sure, Zach and Naik, he will explain it very well because he's, he's a specialist in sin, uh, uh, you know. Uh, he, he knew a lot. He have a lot of knowledge about those things, you know. I can. I think Zachary Naik is asleep. Let me call the other number. Captain Prince, I don't know. Call me. Uh, yeah, hold on, Zachary Naik. How you know it's me? You are the only person who called me after the middle of the night. Everybody. Hey, Zachary Naik, I have a question. Just very short question. Just take it easy, man. Don't uh, and don't spit at me all over me. It's a uh, Christian friend. First of all, I told you before if you call me, bring with you an umbrella. Bring what? Umbrella. Uh, okay, so I, I forgot the umbrella. Uh, 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 Zach and I, uh, I have a hadith in front of me in the screen. I know what you're talking about. And I was reading it. So, how you know that? Are you, are you, are you, you said you are busy. I was busy watching you. Ah, you are busy watching me. Okay, so how Allah will destroy us if we don't commit sin and ask for forgiveness. What is the wisdom behind this? I will tell it to you. First of all, you are stupid. Secondly, you are ignorant. Number three, you don't think you're ugly. Number four, don't call me again. Zakir? Zakir? You hang up? Christian Prince, I did not hang up on you. It was Allah who hung up on you. Ah, Allah hung up on me. Ah, it happened. Always you do that. Exactly. And now, leave me alone. Hey, but what is the answer? The, the guy, your prophet said that if we don't commit sin, Allah will kill us. Why? I thought we should not commit sin. I thought because Adam commits sin, Allah kicked him out from heaven. So how, how if we don't commit sin, Allah will kill us, destroy us? There's the wisdom behind it. And I'll explain to you. Okay, explain to us. First of all, Allah is all merciful. Is Allah what? Merciful. Ah, he's all merciful. Okay, what does this have to do with this? So Allah the all merciful, he will kill me if I don't commit sin? Exactly. Because Allah will give you a special training. Special training? Exactly. So you commit sin. And then by commit sin, what do you do? You are going to learn how to pray for Allah and beg for forgiveness. It's a training for a training purpose. Exactly. Like if you go to the company and they say to you that this phone call is going to be recorded for a training purposes. For what? Training purposes. Ah, so Allah, he make like a call for us to commit sin and then he record it for training purpose. Exactly, Christian Prince. And now you are getting more smarter. And may Allah guide you. Hey, okay, but hold on. So Allah, in order for us to be trained to pray, he could not do it unless we commit sin. Exactly. Okay, so I have to go now and have do some fornication. And that will make Allah, uh, will make me like uh, qualified for the training, right? Exactly. Uh, it, it, there's like how many fornication I should do to go and join the training. No limitation. Do as you are with. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, there's a hadith that says that Allah, he is the one who for us, force us to do fornication uh, so how Allah he want me to do fornication and then he want me to ask for forgiveness and for the purpose of a training but he is the one who make me do fornication Christian Prince first of all the hadith doesn't say that uh, the hadith in the front of your screen I know the hadith by heart Ta'i Muslim hadith number 2657 
ذاك النايك يو ميس ذا لتر بي فورجيف مي لتر بي اوكي اتس ايب فيرلي الله هاف فيكت فورشن اوف ادوتري فور ا مان تو انجيج اوكي ان ويتش هي اوف نيسيسيتي ماست كوميت اوكي سو That's what I said. Allah, He forced you to commit sin. Must commit. Do you see? It says He necessarily must commit. Great and plain. Allah, He make you commit sin. How outrage you? First, He make you see a beautiful woman, and then the woman she have nice feature. Nice feature like what? You know, nice feature. Uh, you mean iPhone? Great and plain. What iPhone? She have nice feature. Um, I'm not sure really what do you mean uh, <clears throat> uh, do you mean what your prophet said uh, like uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, like this hadith Allah he will bring us women who would have nice desirable front passages exactly and I was looking for the correct word to say it for you and the prophet he got the bit to them so Allah he made women they have desirable front passages Uh, Zakir, what is desirable front passages mean? Crazy print. I mean, I'm not sure how old are you, but you are being stupid now. Desirable front passages. It's very simple. Okay, what is the front passages women they have? I'm not sure. What is that? Their nose, their what? I'm not sure. What, what do you mean exactly? Crazy print. This is very embarrassing. You are not only ignorant about Quran and Islam, you are ignorant about sex. Ah, uh, sex? There's sex here? Where? It says desirable front passages. What does that mean? Do you think really that this word desirable front passages is about their nails or about their fingers? You are stupid. This is about something very serious and very beautiful. Ah, can you please like uh, explain to us so we can understand better what does that mean exactly? Okay, if you look at the women, women they have some nice feature. As an example like this. Uh, this is a watermelon. Great friend, don't be stupid. Okay, I will make it more clear for you. Uh, this is a shooting target. Great friend, focus with me. Okay. Um. Oh, those are two tires. Great friend, you are driving me crazy, man. What's wrong with you? This is not tires. This is about women. Women, women, they have tires. Those are two feet are women, they have them in the front bed of it. Um, so they are not tires. Huh. Ah, they are eyes. Chris and Prince, you're getting close, but you have to go down a little bit. Um, not their eyes. Ah, the two holes of their nose. Chris and Prince, I'm leaving my paper with you. I'm going to hang up on you. I, I, I give up. I don't know what it is. Okay. In the language in Pakistan, it's called boobs. In Pakistan language, it's called boobs? What does that mean? Okay, booby, booby. Oh, I'm not sure what is that. Chris and Prince. Okay, a uh, woman they have booby. Ah, this is a dog. They call him Bobby. Chris and Prince. I, 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 I'm really I'm suffering with a lot for threatening here. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so why you don't use a clear word and say what it is? Okay, this is their breath. Ah, their breast. Ah, their breast is desirable. Exactly. So this is only for the breast. Not exactly. Oh, there is more. What is that? If you go down a little bit, like one foot more, two foot more, you will see something else, and that is included too in the bucket. Uh, Zach and Nick, are you talking about? Uh, <clears throat> exactly. Really? You are talking about their belly bomb? Chris and Prince are crazy. I did not say belly bomb. I said go two feet down. Two feet, not one feet. Two feet down. Not the belly bomb. Uh, what is that? Uh, I'm not sure. There's, I, I don't know. There's nothing there. You know? Chris and Prince, I advise you to go to school and do study some science. My name is Dr. Daik and Naik, but I'm not have time to explain to you what women have. You are stupid. Oh, okay. So, Isaac and Naik, so here, it says here that the male, he will have a male member, will never go flaccid. What is that? I'll clear to you. Every male have a male member. 
Uh, I have a membership, by the way. I like I go to uh, uh, like a, a hunting club. This is not what I'm talking about. It's not membership. It's member, male member. Yeah, the, the hunting club. It's only male there. There's no female. Chris and friends, focus with me. It's the male member. The male member. Um, okay, male. I got what male member. Okay, he's a member. Okay, it is not. <laughs> It is his member. Uh, he is a male and he have a member. Okay, uh, the male member. Okay. And I want you to connect it with the word after it. It said it's not going to become flooded, i.e. soft or limp. Member will not come soft and limp. Huh. I don't know. This is too much. What is that member will become soft and limp? Ah, now I got it. Finally, Christopher Smith, you are getting better and you are learning. Okay, now I get the full picture, Zach and I. Let me explain to you how I learned it. You, first you told me about the two, those two circles. And now you told me about the male member. And obviously there's a connection between them, correct? Exactly. All right, I get it. So. Allah, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, he was talking about the news. So he was saying, like, okay, those are the eyes, and this is the nose. I got it. Christian Prince, don't call me again. I don't want to hear from you ever again. You are a stupid or you are an idiot. How in the world you come to that idea that this is about the nose? Uh, but it says there like the two there's two eyes and you know a, a member a number will never fall soft uh, have you ever seen a nose where they go soft they don't go soft they are always they're very hard you know like you know touch them mm. hello uh, Zakir uh, uh, okay I, I think Zakir he he gave up, he gave he gave up on me any Muslim you are saying to us you have religion, this is your religion. I mean, aren't you even ashamed to follow a man like this? Desirable male member, a female, her, talking about her breast and her vagina. And he promising you that you have a penis will never go sleep. And this is from God. A pimp from Las Vegas will not do that. Tomorrow we will continue, God is willing. We will leave it for with here. We continue the video for tomorrow. We will make it episode number two. <laughs> and uh, I hope that uh, the Muslims, they will ask this insan, why he is so silly and stupid? He's talking like kids. And why this guy, he don't dare to call me? Mr. Insan, I challenge you to have the courage to give me your Skype. I will call you. Don't call me. I will call you. You choose the time. You choose the day, you choose the hour, and I will be happy to call you. And not only that, you choose even what you want to talk about. I mean, how easy it is. Not only that, I accept that you ask me to ask you the question, which means the question I will give it to you is written by you. <laughs> Have you ever heard of an exam like this? You tell me what to ask you. How easy it can be. Even though you will not be able to debate me, I will make you write the question, which I will give it to you. You write it. You choose the questions. I will make you choose a topic. I will make you in control. You are the you are the you are the guy. Yet you will not dare to do it. I feel sorry for you, my friend. You are old. You might die soon. Repent. Stop following. The pagan god Allah, the god of vagina and penises. Shame on you. Shame on you in this age to be deceived by sexual god. Those promises does not fit with the mighty god, his holiness. Those fit only with someone is sexual maniac trying to seduce the Bedouin Arab. Who they have nothing in their life except wine and sex. This is why the Quran promised them wine in heaven, rivers of wine, 
river of milk, an endless penis, and a penis will never sleep. An endless number of women, and each time you sleep with them, they will become virgin again. That's your God. If this is God, so what is pimp? I will leave that for the Muslims who will listen to this. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And I hope I will come live on air tomorrow. Actually, I will set up the time from now so people will know about it from now. We will continue tomorrow and enter tomorrow. We leave you in peace with the Lord of peace, the Messiah, the Christ. God loved the Muslims, not only loved the Christians. For he loved the Muslims, we are here to show the love of God to them, to show them that Islam is nothing but false. Islam is nothing but a fraud. And Muslims, obviously, they have nothing to talk about except making fabricating stories. They attack Paul, but yet in their book, Paul is a great man. They make Paul the one who created Christianity when their book says Paul was a messenger of God. They say things which does not make sense and they cannot support what they say. And then we find, we open their books or we get them busted from their books. This is how silly they are and this is how shallow they are. They have nothing to stand on. They have nothing to follow. They have no one to guide them. And the only guidance can come from the Messiah. Go, my friend, and read the Gospel of Christ and see how wise it is, how wonderful it is. Not only it's about wisdom, it's about something will feed your spirit. It is something will speak to you about your daily life. In the year 2020, still there is no book can speak to your story. Not a story exists 2,000 years. Your story, the Messiah, he speak to you today. In every teaching he says, in every page he say, he is talking to you about your life about your job, about your suffering, about your pain, about your cases, about everything you are suffering from. That is the Messiah, the Word of God, the one who lives. It lives by living with you, not by written in a book. The book will not make it living Word of God. The living Word of God is the one who lives my life, who come to me when I need it, to help me, to guide me, to be strong with it, not a book I recite and repeat. I don't even understand what it's saying. It's in different language. The word of God, my friend, is salvation. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. I am the truth. I am the door. The one who believe in me and die will live. So we invite you, all Muslims in Indonesia, to believe in the living Messiah, who is right now as we speak in heaven, listening to us, to me, to you, and he will be the judge in the judgment day, even in Islam. Soon you will be standing in front of the Messiah. Get ready. Get ready. This fool man cannot save you. Thank you. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Bye-bye.